I preach in the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Easter to all of you. I want us to think back to the beginning of the pandemic. When we were sending out letters of encouragement and prayers that we could say from home, this is before we had figured out Zoom or Facebook Live. It was when we were feeling particularly disconnected and afraid. And we would place these words at the end of each message. St. John's, continue to pray for each other, care for each other, stay connected, remain faithful, feel your feelings, say your prayers, ask for help when you need it, receive care from others, acknowledge your deepest longings, and know that we serve a risen Christ who will join us together again. And now here we are. It's been two years. The last time that we gathered in this space for an Easter Sunday service in person was in 2019. It's been a long time. Really hard. Some of it really bleak. A long wilderness. But here we are. Today we come home. So welcome home. It's good to be home. And we have expanded the way that we stay together. Some of us here, some of us online. We're staying connected, caring for each other. Breathing together. Letting God breathe through us. Last night at the Easter vil vil vid village, <laughs> the Easter vigil, we baptized five-year-old Beatrix. Where are you, Beatrix? Stand up. Raise your hand. There she is. <laughs> and we did that at a service that was begun way back with the early Christians in the first century. A service at night, a beautiful mystery-filled liturgy that centered around two elements, fire and water, moving from darkness to light, moving from the tomb to the resurrection. And both in preparation for her baptism and then last night at the service, I asked Beatrix, why do you want to be baptized? Tell us, Beatrix, real loud. She said, I, wanted to be a I want to be a member of the church. And yeah, it's beautiful. And Beatrix, this is a big part of what that means. To continue to pray for each other, to care for each other, to stay connected, to remain faithful, to feel our feelings, and we'll say more about that in a minute, to ask for help when we need it, and that's so hard for some of us, and to receive care when we need it from others, and that's so hard for some of us, to acknowledge our deepest longings and to know that we serve a risen Christ that will join us together again. Being a member of the church, being a follower of Christ, let's say, is also about learning the stories. The stories in our shared tradition that are sometimes filled with mystery and beauty, and sometimes they're really heartbreaking, but they always lead us to transformation, becoming something new again. Like the stories that we journeyed through this Holy Week. Remember on Palm Sunday, we started with Hosanna, and we ended with Crucify Him. And then we began again with the crucifixion on Good Friday, but we end today in resurrection. And the stories that we heard last night at the Easter Vigil, the great stories, the 
story of creation, about a God who loves us, each one of us, all of us, all of us, each of us made in God's image, and it was so good. <laughs> what can't we face knowing that? What can't we face knowing that? And then we heard the story of Moses and Pharaoh and the parting of the Red Sea. And we heard Moses say, listen, listen. Who do you think can hold God's people back when the Lord God Almighty has said, let my people go? God wants us to be free. All of us. None of us despairing, none of us oppressed, none of us hungry, and there are all kinds of hunger. None of us fearful or lost, but free. And then we heard the story of the prophet Ezekiel who had a dream that all was lost, that all seemed dead and dry, that everything had been destroyed. And Ezekiel dreamed that all would be restored, dry bones coming back to life again, if we would just breathe. And then God gave us a message through the prophet Jeremiah, who said, your names are written in my heart, just as mine is written in yours. And we told all these stories, and it was so beautiful, so good. And we tell these stories, but really... We tell them so that we can see that these are our stories, that we're in the story, that it's not just about those people back then in that time, but it's the story of us with God with us, always transforming us, always making something new again. And today we hear this story, and this is where we get to talk about feeling our feelings. Today on this Easter story, we hear about Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women who went to the tomb that morning with spices to tend to Jesus' body, and they were heartbroken. But instead of finding Jesus there, they found two men who said, why are you looking for the dead among the living? He is not here. He is risen. And then look at your text and think about this. It says, the women were perplexed and terrified. And Peter, who didn't believe the women, by the way, went to verify the story for himself, that the, empty t the tomb was empty for himself. And the scripture says that he was amazed. Now, these were the very closest friends of Jesus who were actually there at the his death and who are now experiencing his resurrection and this is a story about them feeling their feelings they weren't feelings of certainty or comfort or being sure of their courage it says that they were perplexed and terrified and amazed so let me say to you now, Beatrix, and to all of you here today on this Easter morning, as we continue to follow Jesus, prepare to be perplexed and terrified and amazed. Prepare to be surprised and changed. Prepare to be transformed. Prepare to find yourself maybe doing things that you never thought you would do. Like having your heart softened. Like forgiving the unforgivable. Like loving the unlovable. Prepare to see the wolf lying down with the lamb. Prepare to be making yourself vulnerable. Prepare to share your own story. Prepare to stand up for something that's seemingly insurmountable, some injustice that it seems like it will never change, like what we saw this weekend in Grand Rapids. 
like having your heart touched by a child saying, I want to be a part of this. And when asked, saying, I will with God's help. Or like having our hearts pierced by a young woman singing this week a song called, I Have Unanswered Prayers, and meaning it, and singing it as a prayer with all of us. Be prepared to be perplexed and terrified and amazed when God calls you and the Holy Spirit nudges you to take a risk and to share something of yourself and to do something, maybe even something that's really hard. Be prepared and perplexed and terrified and amazed when someone forgives you. When you've seen your relationships restored. When you see walls and barriers crumbling. When you see new things that surpass your imagination that are being built. When you feel your heart expanding. When you find yourself following Jesus, wherever that leads, however that is. And most of all, remember this. Jesus did not die and rise from the tomb to start a religion. Or so that we could make beautiful worship services. Or that so that we could believe just the right things or say just the right prayers. He came to us, God became one of us, and lived and taught us everything that he knows, and he faced death, and he died, and he walked right through it and came back out, out on the other side, raised from the tomb, so that we would remember that nothing, nothing, separates us from the love of God. So there is nothing to fear. That is what resurrection is. And I know some of you have lost your loved ones this week, and it's unbearable. But that is what resurrection is. Love never dies. Love always wins. So love one another. Because that is what we are designed for. Healing, compassionate, merciful, freeing, uncompromising, surprising, perplexing, terrifying, amazing love. is what we were designed for. So, continue to pray for one another. Care for each other. Stay connected. Remain faithful. Feel your feelings. Ask for help when you need it. Receive care from others. Acknowledge your deepest longings. And know that we serve a risen Christ who will join us all together again. Now, are you prepared to be perplexed and terrified and amazed? I want you to stand with us and we're going to sing an ancient, ancient chant that Christians throughout this, the years have sung to stomp down, to actually trample death and to remember that love is what we were made for. And I expect you to stomp your feet while we're singing because we're trampling death. <laughs> Where's that drum? A drum. A drum. <laughs> 